Friends, let's take our fourth question. Now, this question belongs to segment heat and thermodynamics. What the question says? Temperature difference of 120 degrees centigrade is maintained between two ends of a uniform rod of length AB of length 2L. Now in this, another bent rod PQ of the same cross section of length 3L by 2 is connected as you can see L by 4, L and L by 4. In steady state, the temperature difference between P and Q will be close to. So as you are well aware that in steady state, the heat flow would be constant. So whatever heat will be supplied from this end, some heat will go from this and some heat will go from this. So let's take that from here, H heat is being supplied. From here, H1 is flowing like this. And from this part, H2 is flowing further H heat. They will both join and they will flow in this manner where the temperature difference between A and B is given as 120 degree. Now, with this formulation of flow of heat, let's start with the solution. So, as you know that H would be equal to H1 plus H2. What is the formula for heat for this particular segment? It would be K A temperature difference between any two points, let's T1 and T2 into the time divided by the length of that segment, right? So for here, I'll say in place of H, I'll write K A T A minus T P. That is in this particular diagram, I'm considering this A point and P point and heat flow is H. What is the length L by 2? So it would be divided by L by 2 into time. That would be equal to H1 K A. Tp minus Tq, I am segmenting it from P to Q and what is the length between P to Q is L plus into time plus H2. Value of H2 would be simply K A T P minus Tq divided by 3 L by 2 into time. This would be our first equation. Now let's simplify it. K and A will be cancelled out. So what is left is 2 T A minus Tp divided by L that should be equal to Tp minus Tq divided by L plus 2 by 3 Tp minus Tq divided by L right now this L again can be cancelled out so what is the final equation twice of Ta minus Tp that should be equal to 5 by 3 Tp minus Tq right let's take this as equation one further on this same line if you see with the diagram that h1 and h2 again add to give this h and what this h would be ka into the temperature difference from tq minus tb divided by what is the length of the segment l so let's write that too so on same lines what we solved the above equation we can write it for h1 plus h2 will be equal to H again where this H is between Q and B segment. So what you get from here is K A T P minus T Q by L plus 2 by 3 K A T P minus T Q divided by L. I am removing the time here for right now and for this H I am going to write K A Tq minus Tb divided by L by 2, right? Now, just remove the segment that is K and L with that will be cancelled. So, on solving, you will get from this Tp minus Tq plus 2 by 3 Tp minus Tq. This will be twice of Tq minus Tb, right? Let's consider this as equation 2. So let's add the two equations, one and two, what we'll get? Adding one and two, you will get twice of Ta minus Tp plus twice of Tq minus Tb. That should be equal to 10 by three of Tp minus Tq. So nearly I have found that Tp minus Tq which I have to find the value of is on one side. Now this value how I can find it? Let's see. If I rephrase this, I can write it as Ta minus Tb 
plus twice of T Q minus T P that is equals to 10 by 3 T P minus T Q right. Now from here what we have to do is this value 2 this is given as 120 degree this can be shifted that side and it will become 10 by 3 into T P minus T Q plus 2 T P minus T Q. On solving further you will get this as 16 by 3 T P minus T Q and this you will solve it would be 240. So further you will get T P minus T Q as 240 into 3 by 16. Solving this you will get 45 degree centigrade. So the difference between the temperatures of P and Q would be simply 45 degree centigrade. Let's see which is the best suited option for same. As you can see option 2 will be the answer to this question. Right? Hope you have understood this one. Let's move forward for question number 5. So in this question there is a convex lens that means this belongs to a segment of optics. Let's see what the question says. There's a convex lens which has been placed 10 cm from a light source and it makes a sharp image on screen at 10 cm on the other side. Now, the glass slab of refractive index 1.5 of 1.5 cm thickness is placed in contact with the light source. Now, to get the sharp image again, the screen has to be shifted by distance D we want to find where has to be shifted and by what distance, right? Now let's see the diagram for this once. So let's take this as the object, this is O and the image formed is I, right? Now, as per the convention, if you understand this, this is given to be 10 centimeter and this is also given to be a 10 centimeter. Let me write that for you. This is also 10 centimeter, right? So V would be plus 10 and u would be minus 10 centimeter. As the first light is going in this direction, we take this as a convention and this being the principal point, right? Now, when you put the glass slab in front of it, so this would be the case, now object is here, but due to the glass slab, there will be some shifting in the position of object as apparent shift, right? Now, this will lead to the new image formation at a newer lens, that is I dash. So, as per now, this would be u dash for us and this will be v dash for us, right? Now, u dash value, I don't know, I don't know the value of v dash, but I know that the focal length of both the lenses are same. So, if I want to know u dash, first I will have to calculate the shift which has been brought into the position of this object due to this slab. Let's see the shift first. So, as per the formula of shift, I will write t 1 minus 1 by mu right what is the value of thickness 3 by 2 1 by 3 by 2 that is the refractive index of this glass so it would be simply half centimeter right so what was the initial length the initial length from lens of the object was 10 now it has shifted 0.5 towards the lens that means the value of u dash would be simply 9.5 centimeter and since it is on the left hand side that is opposite to the first slide that it would be minus. Now, as per the previous equation, 1 upon V minus 1 upon U was equal to 1 upon F. Also, 1 upon V dash minus 1 upon U dash should be equal to 1 upon F. Seeing to the two equations, we can equate the left hand side of both and I will obtain 1 upon V minus 1 upon U is equal to 1 upon V dash minus 1 upon U dash. Now, just put down the values here, you will get 1 upon 10 minus of minus 10 is equals to 1 upon v dash which I don't know minus of minus 9.5. On solving this you will get v dash is equals to 10.55 centimeter approximately and it is in plus that means the image will be shifted to the right hand side. Let's see here which is the best suited option. So as per the options available 0.55 centimeter away from the lens is the best suited answer here. Answer to this question would be option 4. Hope you have understood this one. Let's take our next question. 
Now this question belongs to kinetic theory of gases that is heat and thermodynamic section. Let's see what the question says. A mixture of two moles of helium gas atomic mass 4U and one mole of argon gas atomic mass 40U is kept at 300 Kelvin in the container. We want to find the ratio of RMS speeds of helium and argon. Before moving further, let's first write what is the formula for the RMS velocity here. It would be under root of 3 R T upon M where M is the molecular mass. And at constant temperature, you will see that RMS velocity is inversely proportional to root over of molecular mass. Now let's proceed with the solution of these. So if you just take the ratios of RMS velocity of helium to RMS velocity of argon, it will be written as molecular mass of argon divided by molecular mass of helium as the velocity and mass portion is inversely proportional. So let's put down the values here. It is simply 40U as per the question data and this is 4U. Solving this, you will get helium's velocity by argon's velocity would be under root of 10, which is nearly equal to 3.14, right? Now let's see which is the best suited option here. So option number three is the best suited option. Hope you have understood this question very well. Let's move on to our next question. That is question number seven.